Hello, welcome to Dungeon Drawers Podcast. I'm your host, Justin. Welcome to our latest weekly mecha anime review, where today we're reviewing uh, Tetsu Gen 28 Morning Moon of Midday, which is a movie that was a sequel to the Twitch Tetsu Gen. A 28 2004 TV series, which was, I don't know if it was necessary a remake, but it was basically like, uh, you know, a show that was maybe, I don't know if it was, it was technically a remake, if, let's just say it was, of the original Tetsu 28 show, which came out in ni- 1963 and was based off the manga that came out in the 50s, right? Which the show. Take, the show takes place after, like, a, like after, like, a dec- uh, after World War II. It's post-war Japan. Exact. I think it takes place exactly uh, ten years after, right? So the, the show is basically about this boy named Shotoro. Shoto, sorry, Shotoro, who and whose father dies, and he inherits. Um, his father's giant robot, Tetsujin 28, which was created when Japan was at war uh, during World War II, but it, it never debuted because it, it, they didn't finish it until like pretty much after the war was over, right? And the, the show is basically him fighting crime with Tetsujin 28, and you know, he and he, he, he has like allies like the professor Shika, what's his name? Shiki Sumi. Let me just double her. She, sorry, Professor Shika Shima and Chief Otsuko, which is like the police chief. And um, there's a, there's also this group of uh, Yakuza called the Murasama Same family. Which they sometimes they're allied with our main character. Sometimes they, you know, they're they're the bad guys, right? So the 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 movie we're reviewing today, Tetsujin 28, um, takes place right after the finale of the original show, where uh, our character was our main character was in a fight with three other <laughs> with three other giant robots with his Tetsujin 28. And there, there's like a bomb. Uh, there's a bomb that the, the robots were trying to to steal, and our main character was trying to stop them. Uh, was getting his butt kicked <laughs> by these three robots, and then some mysterious stranger young man takes the the controller from Shotoro and defeats Tetsu uh, Tetsujin 28's enemies, which uh, Tetsujin 28 is a giant robot controlled by a remote control. Which, um, because back then, it was believed that, you know, realistically, a person couldn't ride a giant robot because, you know, you would suffer from nausea and, like, you know, uh, and other, like, you know, stuff. You know, if you ever read, um, that manga whose name I forgot <laughs> by, uh, Naoto Urasawa, what was it called? Oh my god, he, he goes into detail about it. 20th Century Boys, that's right, 20th Century Boys, where like, our, which if people don't know what 20th Century Boys is about, it's about these group of friends who were growing up in the 60s, uh, come up with this, you know, uh, conspiracy theory book on how they think the world's going to end, and one of their enemies from their school, uh, school days takes that book, creates a cult and actually makes the shit and that book happen in real life. <laughs> and one of the things was a giant ro- a giant robot would destroy Tokyo or whatever. So like they they actually make a giant robot. <laughs> and they constantly reference Tetrigen 28, by the way. Which did I mention T- Tetrigen 28 was one of the first giant robot shows in Japan. Might have been the actual first one, I think. I'm not 100% sure. Because there, there is also a giant robot. And it also had, like, a live-action show. And there's a live-action Tetsujin 28 movie. Alright. Yeah, so the... After, like, you know, the, the young man defeats the robots with Tetsujin 28, it's revealed that he's the lost... The long-lost uh, adoptive son uh, of uh, Shodoro's father, which I forget his last name. <laughs> 
Uh, wasn't it Canada? Yeah, Canada, right? Professor Canada. And, like, he was originally supposed to be Tetsu, uh, Tetrogen 28, which Tetrogen means Iron Man in Japanese, for people who don't know. Was supposed to be Tetrogen 28's original operator, operator, but he was drafted into the war and put in, like, a kamikaze squad. <laughs> <laughs> Which you know, I didn't. I didn't know the kamikaze squads were, were a thing. I just thought, you know, you volunteered for that. <laughs> so the fact that there were actual kamikaze squads, which is for people who don't know what kamikaze squads are, basically it's they were basically suicide squads. Where you know the most effective way to utilize all the ordnance on an aircraft was to crash it into things. <laughs> into air enemy like, you know, uh, aircraft, not air, yeah, so, sorry, uh, sea crafts, like, you know, like ship, naval ships and stuff. <laughs> right, so yeah. <laughs> Which I, I, I learned, um, I learned about that while re uh, reading the manga, uh, what was it called? Bakurano R's. <laughs> or, sorry. No, R's, yeah. <laughs> Which I, I reviewed the first, you know, couple episodes on my on my YouTube channel if you want to check that out. Which, if you haven't seen Bakurano, it, it, it gets compared to a Evangelion, but it, it's not... There is some weird shit, but it's mostly original, I would say. And, uh, it, the... People from Abigail and were so impressed by the guy's character design, mecha design, sorry, that they had him work on the rebuilt movies. Like he, he did, uh, like some of the uh, some of the angel designs in the second movie, right? So a after like after it's revealed that um, the young man is is the adoptive son of Shotaro, sorry, of uh, Professor uh, Kaneda, who's also his name is also Shotaro Kanada, by the way. So when when they go to address his the will, uh, Professor Kanada's will, it says all all of his uh, uh, stuff goes to the only the only son of Professor Kanada, Shotaro Kanada, because but because the, it says uh, only like uh, son. It doesn't say adoptive son, so like all, of, uh, all the stuff, all of his stuff stays with uh, Sh the young Shodor Kaneda, who's the main character of the movie and the TV show. So that that puts uh, uh, Shodor, the older Shodor Kaneda, in like a difficult position. He goes to check out the old apartment building that his that his par uh, original parents lived. In, right and like you know it's apparently it's empty and it's being run by this uh, middle-aged woman he lives there and while that's going on the next day uh, the guy the the guy who read the uh, the will who's the, this lawyer uh, gets murdered <laughs> and there's a, a note on there that says you know um, young Shotaro Kaneda is not fit not fit to Pilot Tetsujin 28, right? Signed by Morning Moon, aka Sangetsu, which was the older Shotaro Kanada's nickname during World War II. While while that's going on, like there, there's a new bomb. Sorry, um, while they're rebuilding Japan, but before they can rebuild Japan, because this is post-war, this takes place during post-war uh, Japan. They're they have to dig up. Like old bombs that didn't that didn't detonate during World War II, during the air raids, and they find this new kind of bomb that nobody knew about called Ruin Bombs, which is a lot like the Gamma Ray bombs from the Hulk comic book series, original comic book series, where it, it was like the Gamma Ray bomb was this bomb that would destroy infrastructure, objects, buildings, and stuff, but wouldn't kill humans or or uh, plant life or animals, right? And that's what this ruins bomb uh, does. So um, while 
so besides from the murder plot, we all, we also have the subplot, which is well, it's mo mostly it's basically the the primary uh, plot. Well, it's like side by side plot, right? Where our characters have to find these ruined bombs, which lead to this <laughs> this ancient not ancient this old wet. A uh, giant robot, which is basically a giant Tetsu 28, which is covered in ruined bombs that our characters have to find and take control over, and to keep it from the hands of this um, uh, for foreigner organization called uh, I think it's called Valor, uh, the, the Valor Foundation, which is this international. Um, organization that want that wants to help rebuild Japan <laughs> for uh, obviously for a cost and they want they also want to take control of this uh, giant uh, Tetsujin 28 which our main characters you know team up and just def defeat the giant robot and then we there's also you know a cool review uh, reveal on who the Morning Moon was, which I'm not going to spoil, but then, and that, I will spoil this, it turns out our main uh, the two Sh Sh Shotaro Kanedas, which look very similar, by the way, turned out they were, they're half-brothers. Right, but the the old, but the but the old Shotaro Kaneda thought he was, you know, was told he was adopted because they, because the professor Professor, um, Professor Kaneda left his mother, uh, uh, divorced his mother, and, like, she, she had won custody or whatever, and she, she wanted him to be, like, you know, raised as an adoptive father in case, you know, he, sorry, adoptive son in case, you know, Kaneda remarries and has more kids, right? Which is, why would you would do that? <laughs> I don't know, that's kind of fucked up, and why the Professor Kaneda would agree to that is it, kind of messed up, you know, it's it's the thing where we, we we had to have the reveal, right? Yeah, so it's the thing where, like, the Tetsujin, the, this movie, um, I really enjoyed the, you know, all the old 1940s music, the, the aesthetics, you know, the, the action scenes were pretty cool, but because this is old mecha giant robots, don't expect our giant robot, our giant robot to have any special attacks. He, all he does is basically punch, punch, punch shit and like throw, throw stuff around. But he, at least he has a jetpack and he can fly, which is pretty cool, you know. But like some of the flying scenes in, in, in this movie were pretty cool, right? And I don't know, I really, I really enjoyed the movie. It's the thing where I think if you're a fan of Giant, of, uh, Giant Robo and, or Big O, you'll really enjoy enjoy this movie, right? And it's not for, for a movie that takes place during post-war Japan, which uh, I remember I watching some anime where they, they're talking about post-war Japan and how post-war never, <laughs> Japan never ends. It just keeps going into the future. But for a movie that takes place during post-war Japan, you expect it to be more depressing, de uh, depressing, and it, it wasn't really. No, it was pretty. It's pretty lighthearted, though. Like there are some characters in the movie I, I thought were weird and out of place. Like there's like there's the comedy, there's a comedy relief uh, duo, uh, which is like this couple, uh, this guy and a girl who's part of the Murasame family, and the girl. Has a Shotokan fetish and has a crush on our main character, who's a little kid. And I thought that was pretty uh, weird and inappropriate for like what is basically a kids' movie, which I don't know what this is rated. Uh, yeah, it's it's not, it's not rated. Thank it's unrated. Thanks a lot, Discotech, who put this out by the way. But yeah, I thought that character was a little weird. And I was a little confused why, like, uh, a character like that would exist from, like, a 1960s property. But then that was probably something 
I didn't know there was a two at the time while I was watching this. I didn't know there was a 2004 show, so that character was probably you know brought in during the 2004 uh, show, which you know I watched the first episode of the Tetsujin 28 uh, 1963 show, and like there's a character it, there's a character in this movie who dies in the in the first episode. <laughs> And there was no girl character, so you know that that explains a couple of things. <laughs> I don't know if I were to give this a rating, it, um, I would say it's I would say it's a seven out of ten. You know, it's a cool. I I don't know a lot of movie mecha movies where it's a who done it. It's a who done it, and you have the you know g- giant robot, you know, like adventure. Right, so that I really enjoyed this movie. So like, check it out. It's uh, but if you're gonna buy it physically, it's like forty bucks. <laughs> that's at least how I. That's how a bit. That's how much I paid for it, which was kind of a ripoff. <laughs> if you think about like, wow, and especially there's no like, there's no like real like features. It just comes with some TV spots and like trailers, and it's not even dubbed in English, which the 2004 show. Um, the 2004 show I, I checked on Wikipedia was dubbed in English, so that, that that's a little you know annoying. But I don't know. I watching this movie, I definitely want to check out more Tetsujin 28 stuff. Right? Maybe I'll check out the 2004 show because I was not you know too uh, too much. I wasn't a fan of the really bad animated <laughs> animated uh, 1963 show, which they even have like. There'll, there'll be like you know characters will be doing stuff and there will be like no sound effects <laughs> and and not not even background music <laughs> so that's yeah that's the thing with old shows that's the thing with anime in general in my opinion anime didn't get good until the 1980s but uh, you know that might piss off some people because you know you have like you know um, what's that Kiba you have Kiba the White Lion old Astro Boy. You know, yesterday, what's it, yesterday, Joe, or was it tomorrow, Joe? Can't I can't remember which one, but it, the the Japanese that was a sheet on no Joe, so which that 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 was like you know pre nineteen eighties you know anime. So, I don't know, like let's be real. Besides from those, what are some actually good like you know pre uh, pre eighties anime besides from Gundam? There's not a lot in my opinion, but yeah. I don't know. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed my review, and like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll post I'll post a link to my weekly Mecha Anime Reviews playlist where you can check out my other an- anime reviews, and like uh, I also created an anime review playlist where I have all my anime reviews in one place. That's not that's not just you know mecha animes. So like, also check that out, which I'll post the link. All right, guys, that's it for today. Uh, my next mecha anime reviews. I'm probably gonna stick to reviewing movies for a while because I kind of want to uh, review uh, t- Toko Satsu shows, which is for people who don't know what t- uh, Toko Satsu. It's, it's basically like stuff like Ultraman, um, Godzilla, Kamen Rider, you know that the live action like you know shows. All right. So I want I want to review some of those. I I've been binge watching like Ultraman and plan on reviewing that. So my next um, mecha anime review is probably going to, is probably going to be the Megazone 23. Oh, so look forward to that. All right.